Today we're going to look at an important issue and that's women on the board. It coincides with publishing of a female FTSE report and two of the authors are in the studio today, Ruth Seeley and Sue Vinicum. Now Sue, what is this female FTSE? Can you say some more about that? Yes, it's a report, Steve, that we do annually, which essentially uh, consists of a census of the women directors across all the FTSE listed companies, looking at the number of women on boards. And then in addition to that, we take a particular topic each year. This year, we've looked at the appointment process of non-executive directors. Now, uh, reports can sit on shelves reports sometimes just say the same thing year after year. Is that true of this one? Well this year we have taken a rather different perspective. We've decided to take a retrospective look at the position of women on boards in the UK. So we've looked back over the last five years and analysed and identified the companies that have consistently had 20% or more women on the boards compared to the companies who've consistently had zero women on the boards. Now what's come out of that? Well it's actually a really interesting analysis because what we've actually found is that the companies that have women on their corporate boards also consistently have women on their executive committees. So there seems to be a connection there. Ruth, I don't know what you think. Do you think it shows a certain attitude from I the think companies? It, it, I think it clearly shows a, a, a certain attitude or a certain approach um, and a belief in, in the benefits of having women on board, particularly by the chairman. And that was another thing we did in this year's report, was uh, conduct some interviews with a number of the FTSE 100 chairmen. Now, some people say, well, it's all to do with industry. Don't expect construction, don't mm. expect heavy engineering to have any, any women. Is, is that how it's worked out? Well, it's interesting you say that because I think through this analysis, we've actually dispelled two very widely held myths. One is the one about sector. And for every company that has no women on the board, we've actually found companies in exactly the same sector with women on the board. So that's no excuse. And the second one is that actually, well, of course, we've only got a relatively small board, so we can't really have women actually every size board has women and in fact actually the top companies this year are some of the smaller ones aren't yes they, i think that the the companies at the top we have burberry who's at the top of our rankings and they i believe have eight people on their board and we also have um diageo and then alliance trust who only have nine people on their board so we've really been able to dispel the myth that in order to have women on boards you need to have a bigger board so what's the secret of this then? Is it habit? Is it determination of the chief executive? What's behind it? I think it is, as Ruth says, I think it's the attitude from the chairman. The chairman essentially drives the process. And in the interviews that we conducted with the chairman, there clearly is a real variance of opinion. There's the chairman who really champion this and they make sure that they do appoint women on the board, whereas there are other chairmen who really are pretty indifferent to it. Now, some people say it's crusty old gentlemen that are the trouble. Is it, does it uh, vary by age at all? I, I don't think we can say that. Some of our most forward-thinking chairmen mm. uh, are also, unfortunately, very near a uh, retirement age, so I don't think that age is a factor. It's just an attitude of the individual. Mm. So are there any recommendations that come out of that? Because it seems to me that, you know, given that uh, disparity there, that yes. we jolly well ought to be saying, you know, there's some people here that uh, are up and coming and should, should be on the board. Yes, that's right. I mean, what we have concluded at Cranfield from our 12 years of research is that it's fundamentally the appointment process of non-executive directors that's actually both a closed and a very flawed system. So in our recommendations this year, we take the clear position that we are actually against quotas, a much talked about topic in the papers these days. And what we would like to see is a complete reforming of the appointment process. That's quite radical. Are you expecting that to be successful? Well, I think there's, you know, it, it's a hot topic at the moment and uh, the government and the CBI and biz a lot of business in general are looking 
to see what needs to be done. One of the things that we would like to recommend is to uh, Im improve the strength of the um, comply or explain mm. element of this. And uh, although we're against quotas, we don't yeah. have an objection to soft targets. And we think that all of the FTSE 350 companies should have a soft target of initially 20% of women on their boards. And that's quite a big ask because more than half of the FTSE 250 companies have no women on their boards at all. And then that we feel that this should be reviewed in a couple of years and, and, and the target should be increased to 30%. And if we set this within an international context, uh, mm. how do we compare with other countries? Well, I think this is why Ruth's absolutely right. The time is, is, is absolutely right for change because we are simply falling behind other countries. So it's quite ironic that the USA and the UK pioneered the measuring of women on boards, and one almost predict, could predict that they would be the two countries that would do best. But we are now falling behind, and other countries like Australia, France, and Spain are really moving fast ahead of us. So if you were to leave people with a message, what would it be? Well, it is that, you know, things have got to change. Mm. There is now an established, comprehensive business case for gender diversity on boards and we have got to move forward on that agenda. Chairman, please note. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.